Manchester United. Probably the most well-known football club in the world with some of the richest history and the home to some of the best players of all time. But in recent years, Man United have not been very good, just to put it blunt. But I bring good news to United fans for once. There's gonna be a huge resurgence for the Red Devils coming next season and possibly even a top four finish. Let me explain. Please drop a like on this video, it really helps me out. Let's try to hit two likes. Let's first quickly recap where it all went wrong last season. Man United placed 8th in the 2023-24 campaign, only winning a total of 18 games and losing 14. This was their worst finish in the Premier League since the 89-90 season, and back then the Premier League wasn't even a thing yet. Aston Villa were title contenders, and Cristiano Ronaldo was only 5 years old. <laughs> It's difficult to point figures at what specifically went wrong, but to start at the beginning of the season, the recruitment was absolutely horrendous in my opinion. May United spent a total of 400 million since the arrival of Ten Hag. The biggest signings include Andre Onana, who looked like a smart decision on paper considering how he was performing in Serie A and the Champions League. With David Hay departing from the club too, he seemed like a fitting replacement. But when it came to his performances on the pitch, he was pretty bad. There were so many times where he was slipping up in places he should not have been, but Ten Hag still backs him for next season. You analyze it well, then you see he's the second best goalkeeper in the Premier League. So uh, he's a strong character, he's a personality, and he will deal with it. Next, there is May United's second most expensive signing in history, Anthony. Probably the most interesting transfer May United have ever made, and I don't think I need to go too in-depth into why he was absolutely horrendous. They also signed Mason Mount for a substantial sum of money last season, and I don't know why they brought him in to begin with. Let's go. He hadn't been that impressive at Chelsea the season before, and during the 2023-24 season he was barely used, mainly due to his terrible fitness. The one positive transfer though was Rasmus Hoyland. He was a bit slow to start at the beginning of the season, but once he got confident and was able to score his chances, he was probably their best signing by far. The main takeaway I'm getting at is that United's recruitment last season was incredibly ineffective and they should have been way smarter with their spending. If we look what they're actually doing on the pitch and in games, the critical issues really become crystal clear. Before I carry on, I need you to do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get the channel to 3k and it would really help me out. Thank you. Ten Hag's tactics in and out of possession look kind of confusing. Their most striking issue I found was the fact that they were very poor at containing their opponents and not allowing them to create chances. Without a functioning high press or proper organization in the back, we saw United full of openings that made them very vulnerable, which suited some players, but it just gave the opposition's attack more space. It comes inside, hits a, shot. No, no. a lot of the goals they were conceding last season were cutbacks, and according to The Athletic, they conceded the fifth most cutbacks in the Premier League. When they drop into the box, they forfeit the wider areas and allow the wingers to cut in. It's ultimately up to Ten Hag and how he decides to fix this issue, and I'm sure we'll see less and less in the upcoming campaign. Because usually managers don't get a second chance like Ten Hag is getting. However, aside from the tactics and the poor signings, the biggest pain for United was their injuries last year. At one point in the season, they were missing 16 first team players at once. But why do I think Man United will push for top four in the upcoming season? Well, if we go back to February of 2024, it was announced that Manchester United would finally see some chances when it came to the ownership. As you probably know, the Glazers have owned Manchester United since 2005, and ever since, the fans have been protesting that they sell the club. And these Glazers, like I say, they're just in it for the money in the green, they're not in for anything else. The Glazers are the root, we need to get these bastards out. Get the Glazers out. Woodward, he's saying he's going to go end of 2021. He's going to go now. Because the Glazers have taken lots of money out of the club for their own benefit and refuse to make quality signings and so on. They just don't care about the clubs as the fans do. But luckily, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his company acquired a 25% stake in the club, and for the most part, he seems to have wholesome intentions. The only interest we have is in winning football matches. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested in the financial aspects of this investment at all, really. But, you know, it's because I'm interested in um, seeing Manchester United being successful again. It needs to get back to where it should be, which is at the top of the game. He hasn't been a part of the club for very long, but he has already made more positive changes to the club's structure and internal management than the Glazers have in the last 19 years. Starting from the top, Radcliffe has appointed a new club CEO, in the likes of Omar Barada. He was previously working in Manchester City for the last 10 years, and he was a big help behind the scenes in transforming Manchester United into a championship club. Barada himself said that his success at City was by design and not luck, and for the most part, the fans are excited about this. So this is the start of hopefully, and it looks like a lot more serious football project at the club, whereby the football side gets treated equally the same as the business side. The other major change made by Ratcliffe heading into the next season was the appointment of a new sporting director. For the last 10 years, United have been going on without a sporting director, which was one of the terrible decisions made by the Glazers. But now they have brought in Dan Ashworth, who has been very successful at Brighton and Newcastle, 
and I think it'll be an immense change to have a sporting director at Man United who is solely focused on the football side of things when it comes to the academy and transfers and so on. At Newcastle, he was partly responsible in the last couple of years for making some great signings in the likes of Bruno Gumarash, Sandro Tonali, Tino Livermento as well. Behind the scenes, Ratcliffe has also been restructuring new technical directors, new recruitment directors, new CFOs, and so much more, but I won't get into that. But possibly the most impactful and exciting change to the first team will be the return of a Manchester United legend. Ruud van Nistelrooy has returned to Manchester United, but this time as a coach. The striker has scored 150 goals as a player for Man U and was one of the most talented strikers of his time. But in the present day, he has gone through an incredible coaching journey and has now joined Ten Hag's coaching staff as an assistant to manager. Having him in the dressing room will be a real asset to the team, and it will be interesting to see how he fits in as a coach. Yeah, he was one of the of the guys who you were pretending to be on when you were playing out with your friends. So uh, having him now here is obviously yeah. It's a, bit, it's a bit special, but uh, it's great, it's good. It's been a few weeks since the opening of the summer transfer window, and I must say that Manchester United have already been making some very promising signings and other additions to the first team. The first signing they have made this season is one player that I'm really interested in seeing. That man is Joshua Zerxi. For 42.5 million euros, he signed for five years from Bologna. At just 23 years old, he was the main man for Bologna last season, scoring an impressive 12 goals in all competitions. That may not seem like a bunch of goals, but remember that Hoyland only scored 10 goals last season before United paid 70 million for him. Xerxes is not a traditional number 9. Instead, he excels in the role often described as a 9.5. He likes to drop deep, pull up the ball, and bring others into play, which allows him to contribute to the team's buildup. His ability to play with an attacking partner and his preference for a more fluid, creative approach makes him a dynamic addition to the Red Devils. But I have to say, one thing that Man United were really missing last season were defenders. They had the likes of Varane, Martinez, and Malasia, but they all got injured last year. So to offset this issue, they have brought in promising youngster Lenny Yoro. At 18 years old, he played 30 matches for Lille last season and was given a main role in the team, being able to defend well against some of the best attackers in Ligue 1. So there's no reason he shouldn't be able to do the same thing in the Premier League. He did cost a whopping 62 million, but for such a bright talent, I think a signing was worth it. And if it wasn't for the new owners, I don't think this deal is getting completed. And when we look at the rise of their youngsters like Garnacho and Kabi Mainu, the role that they will play would get bigger. And I suspect that they're going to be the centerpieces of this team going into the future. By the time this video goes up, Man United should be gearing up to play their third preseason fixture against Arsenal. But for right now, they have only played Rosenberg so far. The result was not that they are looking for, conceding a last minute goal. But when you realize this was the team that they were starting, you begin to understand a little bit more. But to be fair, Ten Hag didn't do the best job controlling the team and things went wrong in a number of places. But when they have their full starting 11, I think things will be completely different. As far as predictions go for their performances in the Premier League, let me explain why this team gets top 4 compared to the likes of Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, or even Spurs. As of right now, the odds say that Man City are the favourites to win. City will be a tough battle and honestly, I don't think United will beat Pep. But last season, United played pretty well against Arsenal and Liverpool drawing the Reds and only conceding one goal to the Gunners. And when we look at the other teams will be competing for third or fourth, surely Manchester United can take on the likes of Spurs, Chelsea, or Aston Villa, and most definitely Newcastle. There aren't many other teams in the Prem that show so much quality in the midfield and up front, and considering the new signings made, Manchester looked like a threat to be reckoned with. In the end, we're going to have to wait for the opening day to see if I'm correct or not. And with their opening match coming against Fulham, I think that'll be a true test of the strength of this United team. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and as always, I'll see you next week.